Providence by 10. We send you off to the Holy Cross Georgetown game. Dan Colco and Sarah Kustak. Thanks, Dave. Free throw from Supreme Cook has put Georgetown on top 7-6 to six early in this ballgame. A couple threes hit early on. And Cook makes two. After 19 points in his Hoyas debut, Supreme Cook to the bench and an early appearance here for Ryan Matumbo. The son of Dikembe Matumbo, who Ed Cooley has said is going to need to take on more minutes this year than he has in years past. Cooley also sees that there is a advantage for his team with size. That advantage becoming even more pronounced when you put 7-2 on the floor. Holy Cross swinging it around. Shot clock down to 7. Drive into the lane, off the mark, and another finish inside by Caleb Kenny. He skied above the rim to go get that one. Well, and Kenny's on the weak side block off that play. Matumbo has to slide over to help, and that leaves him open and susceptible for Georgetown giving up an offensive glass. Styles another three, too strong. And rebound tipped over to Will Batchelder. Nugent will look for that shot. Montgomery lost the handle. Rumbaugh swoops in and finishes with the right hands. The redshirt freshman pesky defensively there. Hoyas want to press you, and they're going to do it in the full court. We've seen some pick up, but also in the half court on the ball. And Brumbaugh right there realized that Montgomery was a little bit loose with his dribble and jumps at it. Batchelder, top of the key. Creates a little space, and his three-point attempt is blocked by Jaden Epps. Epps, left-hand dribble off to Styles. Another three-point attempt, another miss, and Matumbo uses that big frame to corral the rebound. Rum ball. This one goes down, and Georgetown's opened up a five-point lead. Second chance opportunities. That size is a factor on the inside for the Hoyas, and they will put up three-point shots. You already seen them here. They've taken some deep ones, and the green light is on. 10-2 run for Georgetown has put them on top by five. Another three, another one off the mark from Batchelder. Georgetown contesting those long shots nicely. Coach Cooley said it. We want to force tough, long jumpers. Styles leaves that one short. Out of bounds. It will be Holy Cross ball. But the redshirt freshman, Rowan Brumbaugh, hitting from distance. Defense to offense. A steal right here going coast to coast. Watching his defender in the finish. And then the win going to the game. Just how emotional it was. And when we talked to him this early, this morning after and during shoot around he says it's been overwhelming because it is there is a lot to accomplish and a lot that he wants to accomplish for this university for this group and it's a lot of what he did he mentioned what he did at providence the turnaround he had prior to him getting there the team was less than 500 in six of the previous 10 seasons and we know the success that he had there but it's all about now a new start for him and for these hoyas nugent for three down and then back out an offensive rebound by joe octave and he drops it in so holy cross height challenged in this matchup against georgetown but they're fighting on the glass early on Jaden epps off the mark on that three-point attempt student section cheering the bucket off of the shot clock will not count and Jake Nips is an uh, individual you would anticipate would get going a little bit more on the scoring side of yes. things than what you saw uh, against Lemoyne, five points. But more than that, he was he, he was efficient, but he took just four shots, did have 11 assists. But for the Hoyas to continue to build, to be successful, he's a guy that you're going to need to rely, rely upon, not just to facilitate and to create, but also be a scorer himself, because that's something he absolutely can do. Reportedly, reportedly, had 46 in a scrimmage against Wake Forest, so he can fill it up. It showed his ability to distribute on Tuesday as well. Jay Heath 
Good on-ball defense there. Holy Cross keeps it, and a three-ball just short from Octave. Supreme Cook the rebound. Heath, second straight game off the bench for Ed Cooley. He might start to work his way into the starting lineup sometime soon. And Epps, a nice step back. DeAndre Williams, the freshman for Holy Cross, played 32 minutes off the bench in their season opener against Siena. Montgomery, nice runner. Well, Montgomery briefly entered the transfer portal after last season. Had some conversations with Holy Cross's new head coach, Dave Paulson, who convinced him to come back, that they want to build with him. Ball tipped away from Epps, but he's fouled. And Epps is smooth here, just squaring up, creating space, able to cover some ground there with that crossover and step back. On the other side of things, Montgomery, we've seen this, we saw that from Montgomery and some from Kenny, the ability to find those driving lanes for Holy Cross is going to be important because they are three-point threats. They're going to knock down three-point shots. The Hoyas have tried to pressure them on perimeter on the perimeter and run them off the three-point line, so there will be lanes and areas. Williams stripped it from Heath momentarily. Epps a deep three. Bottoms. Jaden Epps starting to heat up a little bit. Silky smooth shot. And the quickness of which Epps can get it off is something that is a major factor in how he reads the defense. Transfer from Illinois. Williams. That three is good. Holy Cross hanging tough. And that's the uh, Dave Paulson talked about players that surprised him a little bit or stood out there against Siena. He had pointed to DeAndre Williams, just a freshman. It showed a level of poise. He was five and nine from the field for eleven points. One of their six freshmen on their roster. Four or five of those six are gonna get decent minutes for Dave Paulson. And there's Wayne Bristol Jr. grabbing the offensive board. Off to Heath. Air balls the three. Bristol. Another offensive rebound, and Epps keeps it at the half-court line. Bristol lost his balance a little bit and has his pocket picked. Another three, another one off the mark. And Heath back the other way. Two on three, Heath. Pace picking up, both teams willing to run. Octave. That bucket goes down, and Holy Cross has cut the Georgetown lead to one. And they look good. They're pushing the pace just as you said that they are pushing the pace just as much as the Hoyas are. And for both of these teams that want to run, so much of dictating that pace comes down to defense, being able to secure a possession and go as opposed to taking it out of the net. Epps just long on the three. Luth Kulabali rips down the defensive rebound. Kulabali. Played just two games for Holy Cross last season due to injury. Octave shut down by Supreme Cook. Williams and Bristol fighting for it. It will stay Holy Cross ball after a media timeout. We have a little three-point party here on a Saturday night at Capital One Arena. Jaden Epps from the top of the key drain. 46. I need to keep saying reported. I was just about to say, you're going to get us all in yeah, trouble. I don't want to do that. Jaden Epps had that 46-point game in the scrimmage against Wake Forest. He's got five already here in this first half. And a lot of things you like about that, five in double figures, but also 23 assists. Yeah. The rebounding was there. We have the shot clock buzzer from Khalil Singleton, the freshman guard. This is the mark. And I know turnovers are something, of course, Ed Cooley wanted his team to clean up, wants his team to clean up. Sometimes that comes with getting used to one another, the acclimation of a new group, new players, new systems. Corner three for Jay Heath is good. Heath had 15 in that season opener. Averaged 12.3 points per game last season. Bo Montgomery elevates over Epps. Nice take. 
Hoyas need to pick him up sooner. The ease of which he got that far into the teeth of the defense is something you need to clean up. It's a nice job there by Montgomery. Well, Montgomery at six foot five. One of the few spots on the floor where Holy Cross will have a little bit of a size advantage. Look at the collapse by Holy Cross. Three players into the post. That's a wide open look in the corner for Heath. It, and that's the balance of over, over helping if you're Holy Cross. Yes, you want to make sure to utilize your help with the size. But those clean looks of three point shots is something that there's a little bit of give and take of how much room you want to give shooters on the perimeter. Supreme Cook, an offensive rebound, and it was knocked out of bounds. See him deed up there by Declan Ryan, freshman who Coach Paulson was saying earlier today has really improved physically over the course of this year. It's slimmed down quite a bit, and they're going to count on him to battle inside against Cook. He gives up a foul there, reaching over the top. Fifth team foul on Holy Cross. Just one for Georgetown thus far. DeAndre Williams, the freshman, will have a seed. And Will Batchelder back into the game. He muscles up on Batchelder. And then a kick over to the freshman Brumbaugh. Another example, the boxes and elbows to help everyone pinching in and collapsing so much to protect the post and protect the penetration has really opened up the three-point point line for Georgetown. Brumbaugh, three of four shooting for eight points so far. Nice pass by Kenny and the finish for Nugent. Excellent work off the elbow and cutting there along the weak side of the lane. A little bit of a no look there from the Yeah, forward. I like it. Add some sauce on that. Rumball. Around and out. Can he hit the deck there? And Holy Cross, a chance to cut it a little closer or tie this ball game with a three. Montgomery guarded by Cook on the switch. Drains it. And we're square at 24. Bo Montgomery looks comfortable. We've seen to drive it on the inside. Has room for that quick trigger from three. We really had the mismatch there after the switch on the perimeter. He D's up fielder now. Feed inside to Cook. Little turnaround. That size, and that's good touch. Because, Dan, you have three purple jerseys around him on the inside. He's still able to create that room to get it off. Kenny loses it, swatted away by Epps. Epps, little hesitation, then a blow by, and a finish at the rim. A strong finish. He go through contact. They list Epps at 6-2. Not afraid to go inside to get his buckets as well. That's Elder. A kick to Montgomery. A couple of nice dishes inside by this Holy Cross team, utilizing the bounce pass. Utilizing the bounce pass, and, and so much of what we talk about getting inside is normally the inside out. They've done a nice job of slashing up through the lane in the paint to allow those openings at the basket. Ethan Brumbaugh play catch. Heath going to work on Batchelder. Can't get it, but offensive board, and now bodies on the deck. Heath and Kenny. And a little pushing and shoving inside as things get a bit testy. Toughness on deck for both. I think that's the excitement for Georgetown, for the Hoyas. Every night, every day, we were watching him during shoot around and how he's going through drills. It, and just, it, it's, it's lively. There is a verve. And that's why he has found so much success. The officials at that dead ball timeout checked to see if there were any technical fouls that maybe should be given out because of the contact at the break. They did not give any. So just a standard two-shot foul there. Jay Heath hits one of the two, and Georgetown increases their lead to four as he comes out and Wayne Bristol Jr. back in. Full 
backcourt pressure here from Georgetown. Freshman Williams back in for Dave Paulson's crew, as is Koulibaly. They feed the big man on the block. Going to work on Fielder. Offensive rebound for Holy Cross. Octave, fade away. Short. Epps has his pass knocked away. Styles will collect. Styles now just one of five shooting. And a turnover for Holy Cross. A little bit of a sloppy stretch both ways the last couple yeah. minutes. Styles. Fielder, the offensive rebound. Whiffed on the putback there. Had what looked like a pretty easy look. Yeah. A lot of contact on the initial take. Green Cook has a seat. Ready to check back in for Ed Cooley at the next dead ball. Nugent thought about firing that three. Batchelder's been quiet. Drives baseline on Fielder. Pass intercepted by the redshirt freshman Brumball. Bristol back to Brumball. That is a beautiful break. Great two on one. The back and forth passing. Excellent, excellent job there by the Hoyas. Cross court pass to Williams. Octave. Gets bumped, and he'll shoot. Joe Octave, a transfer from the Air Force Academy. Last year, nearly 12 points per game for Holy Cross in 30 minutes per contest. 20 double-digit games for Holy Cross last year, including their final 11 contests of the season. So he really finished the 2022-23 season on a strong note. Oh, big one on Monday at the Garden. Rick Pitino. I love it. Making his return. Very good Michigan team. Yeah, it's going to be fun. That'll be one to watch. It's going to be fun. I may have to make my way there, Dan. I mean, you know, I'm in New York. I just Fine. right up the street. Go ahead and make me jealous, <laughs> why won't you? Styles. 16-footer's good. This is an important couple minutes here closing out the half for both teams. Holy Cross has done a really nice job of... For the most part, it being effective on the offensive side, good pressure on the defensive side, but a six-point game, who can start to open this up or cut into the depth? That Childer has his pocket picked. Epps amping it up defensively. The outlet pass to Styles. What a finish. A little Euro there at the end. That's a nice finish by Styles. Six Georgetown steals. Have helped them to their biggest lead of the ball game at eight. Octave on Wayne Bristol Jr. The contest came from Styles. Labali on offensive board. There's Nugent wide open. You cannot give him that much space. Holy Cross can shoot, and we said that it in their game against Siena. Free throw line was tough for overall. They were 53% from the field, 50% from the three point line. And when they've got clean looks here tonight, they have knocked them down. Shooting 55% from the field so far. Epps, a lot of contact inside and they call a block. That will go on Batchelder. Another turnover for Holy Cross. That has hurt them, and it's half-court sets look like. But we say all that and can also say Holy Cross is only down yep. by five. Yep. 
done a really nice job, other than those turnovers, which have hurt them. They've created quality looks. They've knocked down some important three-point shots. They've been aggressive defensively as well. It's been a, a nicely played game on both sides. Jade Neps hits the first of two. Sophomore out of Norfolk, Virginia. And after hitting the second, he'll stumble to the court and then check out of the game with Jay Heath coming back in. Very different teams here in terms of how they've been constructed, Sarah. A ton of transfers on this Georgetown roster. Only two on the Holy Cross roster. Just Octave and Jade C. So Dave Paulson, more continuity, which certainly works in his favor. Four returning starters from last year's Holy Cross team. Just Batchelder trying to get into the scoring column, but still yet to hit from the field. Off to Brumble. Gets his defender in the air. Corner three from Donovan Grant is an air ball. We walk on getting some minutes in the first half here. Octave. Ooh, nice adjustment midair. Get a hit. Bristol on his hip and still able to stay square. Squares his shoulders nicely off that play. Cross down by five. Wayne Bristol Jr. misses the three. Ball tipped out of bounds. And it'll go Holy Cross's way. Coming up on the Chief Halftime Report. Highlights and stats right here from Capital One Arena. Plus, the studio crew looks at the top Big East newcomers. Stay with us here at the break. We'll just drive by Octave. So patience, poise. He's got Bristol on his hip and the squares his shoulders, goes right through the basket. It's a nice take, too, because the change of speed is something that a player like Octave has got a, a strong frame and has got some size. He's kind of trying to trap here in the half court. Batchelder knocked to the board, and he'll draw the foul on Grumble. Third foul on Georgetown through the first nearly 19 minutes. Octave with the shot clock at eight. As Fielder switched on to it. Offensive rebounds by Nugent. And a fresh 20 for Holy Cross. And that's where when you're switching at every position one through five, you can become susceptible to mismatches on the glass. Ulabali spins a dish to Nugent. And a travel. A couple good defensive possessions there by Georgetown. And now Epps will come back into the game. As Ed Cooley may be going a little bit of offense defense here in the last minute or so of the first half. Seventh turnover now for Holy Cross. Just two for Georgetown thus far. So doing a much better job keeping the basketball than they did the other day against Lemoyne. Got a three second difference between shot clock and game clock. Epps on Montgomery. Three seconds. Batchelder going to push. Kula Bali can't get it off before the buzzer. And it'll be a five-point margin as we hit halftime here at Capital One Arena. Spirited back and forth first half. Holy Cross, where they were last year. They finished 10th in the conference. They went just 10 and 22, including 7 and 11 in Patriot League play. They haven't had a winning season since 2013-14. So this program has had a tough go of it the last bunch of years. But 
They're fighting here tonight, and down by just five as we kick off the second half of play. Rumball for three, too strong. Offensive board by Supreme Cook. And he gets fouled. So despite Georgetown starting a 6'9 Supreme Cook and a 6'10 Drew Fielder with nobody on the court for Holy Cross taller than 6'6, Georgetown now even with Holy Cross in the rebounding column. And Holy Cross has done a good job of gang rebounding. They're finding bodies. Sometimes, you know, the size is, is a big factor, but two, just understanding angles and making sure that you're pushing players out. They've also attacked the glass nicely on the offensive side, too, but that's something you're going to need to continue doing. We talk about this quite a bit. If you're looking to run, if you're looking to find some early offense, that comes with gathering the possession, being able to get the, those one-and-out looks. Cook misses both of his free throw attempts, and it's still a five-point game. And Montgomery. Off for Caleb Kenny, who had a nice first half. He'll find his way back to Montgomery. Batchelder, a scoreless first 20 minutes. Montgomery. That's a pretty floater. And a three-point game now. Holy Cross continues to fight with this Hoyas team. Oh, gets on the inside. It's Montgomery, he's got all the way to the rack, knocked out three-point shot, showing the mid-range now. Cook. Oh. Kept that pivot foot, found a little bit of space, and capitalized. A strong move by Cook, and there's not much that Caleb Kenny can do. That, that's where you look at the size, and 6'6", 220 for Caleb Kenny, and then Cook got a couple inches on him and a couple pounds on him, and just uses that size inside. Styles elevates for the swat. Jaden Epps, a three ball, blocked. Nugent got his hand on it. And it will be Holy Cross basketball after a foul on Supreme Cook. And a great job there. Man, Styles meets it before it gets to the basket. Good heads up play. We've seen a lot of that from Georgetown, just the pressure that they're putting both on the ball but also their tracking and timing on some of these attacks. And two, the, you mentioned the turnovers for Holy Cross. Give, give credit to Georgetown for how they're blowing up. A lot of these DHOs, the dribble handoffs, they're really getting into bodies or being physical. Supreme Cook now with three fouls and a turnover. Montgomery and Octave not on the same page there. And sometimes that's the early season stuff. Mm. You know, there is continuity with Holy Cross with players returning, but even new system under Dave Paulson, players getting used to one another. Those are the nuances you continue to build through the year. Georgetown with more than half of their shots so far tonight from beyond the three-point arc. Despite that size advantage, he goes towards the bucket and he's fouled. Are you surprised? We talked to Coach Cooley earlier today, Sarah, and he said that his team is probably going to shoot more threes than his Providence teams had in the past because of the construction of this Georgetown roster. Are you surprised by how many threes they've taken tonight? No, one, I, I think they've been excellent shots, and, and they've come through ball movement. So I think that's exactly what you want, especially when you're working the inside-out game, you're creating look, good looks because you're putting the defense in rotation, and they put Holy Cross in rotation. But that's where Ed Cooley, and you could say this about many coaches, especially in the Big East, you see it across the board, those are, are some of the best coaches that they create their style based on the personnel, how they want to play, the systems they implement, what they're looking for is based on the players that they have. And he understands that's, that's the type of players that he has. What they need to do, how they need to succeed and win comes from that volume three-point shooting. He gets one of two down at the other end, and then a little finish there at the basket by Octave. Not the biggest guy on the court, 6'4", 205. But he's excelled in that three, five foot area right around the rim. He's physical. And, and two, just his frame with his shoulders. Talk about that, just his ability to square to the basket, regardless of how his body is contorted. Jaden Epps, a lot of space opened up for him. He gives it off to Cook. Comes down with it, goes right back up, and an easy finish.
Jaden Epps with nine points and continues to distribute as well. Octave again right to the bucket. Twelve points now for Joe Octave. Epps thought about the three. And another turnover. Octave surveying. And now he'll settle it down a bit, going to work on Heath. Dave Paulson barking for a reset offensively. Caleb Kenny got a little ball contact there as Epps tried to swat it away. Held it tough. And Holy Cross within two. See it from Kenny. We see it from Octave. They're going at it. doesn't matter the size difference. They feel like they've got some quickness to them and ability to get off shots against some bigger defenders. Three ball from Heath will go down. Jay Heath up to eight points with that three. Good swing three for Georgetown. You need that. Holy Cross has had a couple baskets. They're building some momentum. That's an important shot from Heath. Octave on fielder. Giving up a lot of size there. Bo Montgomery on the court will call timeout. So Holy Cross will keep it after a quick break with 10 on the shot clock. Joe Octave has impressed so far tonight. Yeah, Air Force. I need to tell Coach Paulson that in the postseason this year in Major League Baseball, the team that hit more homers won 25 out of the 29 <laughs> games. But, Sarah, I think what we're seeing here tonight is Holy Cross is hitting a lot of singles, and they're keeping themselves in the game as a result. Yeah, although he did say he was a big analytics guy. Yes. So I, I think there's a balance a there. I know. Maybe he was just trying to relate to you, too, with all the baseball uh, comparison. Offensive board picked up by Holy Cross and then a turnover as Drew Fielder reaches in to take it away Brumbaugh thought about it Rowan Brumbaugh the DC native a consensus top 100 prospect a year ago Went to Texas redshirted and then comes back home to Georgetown three ball from Jaden Epps Talked about his quick release he had a little bit more time coming off the screen there. Well, it, and you had pointed it out earlier, I think to just his decision making of figuring out when to look aggressively for his own shot and, and when to continue to play make and facilitate for his teammates. And and sometimes you watch him and it, it seems as though he's thinking pass first before even looking for his own. Montgomery has a three ball rim out, but another offensive rebound by Holy Cross. Kulabali back into the game. Jockeying with Fielder for position. Montgomery. He draws the foul. And we'll get two free throws after a quick break. Jaden Epps showing off his stroke here this evening. Another three. But in particular, these two individuals, Montgomery and Octave, reading the defense. They've been getting to the front of the rim. They've been working some mid-range game, taking three-point shot. It's all been a balance on the floor and how they're getting some quality looks. And because of that, they, they've been efficiently putting them in. Well, Montgomery, a 66% free throw shooter a year ago. Knocks down both. And Holy Cross now five of six from the line here tonight. After they went just three of 12 at the charity stripe in their season debut. So he's back into the game, gives it off to Epps, top of the key. Epps puts his shoulder down, flings it up wildly. Fielder, offensive rebound, the putback, no good. Out of bounds off Holy Cross. Fielder and Wayne Bristol Jr. will have a seat with Styles and Cook checking back in.
Georgetown team only has nine active scholarship players at the moment. Naomi Sue recovering from a broken hand. Styles can't get the mid-range fade away, and then another offensive board, and Cook is fouled. And Ish coming back would be a big boost for the Hoyas, what he's adding to the table for a Cooley. We've talked a lot about J.K. Jr. and just him returning back from injuries, been coming off the bench, what it will look like for him, but the more that he gets healthy and looking like himself, which he already seems to be here in the early part of the year. Well, that foul on the floor. Going to battle with Koulibaly inside. Drum ball. Batchelder backs up, gives him a little space, and the three is too long. Left hand dribble. Feed inside to Koulibaly, who has his legs cut out from under him. Rumbaugh saying, That wasn't me. And the crowd not happy with the foul call on the redshirt freshman. Let's take a look at this. Kind of. It, it, it looks like Koulibaly just slips a little. Brumball, that's a foul. He he, he hits into him and, and bodies under him, but I think it, it looked worse than what it was because Koulibaly seemed to slip on his own a little bit with that body bump. Infielder immediately back into the game with Heath having a seat. Montgomery pass looking for Nugent. Goes out of bounds. Tenth turnover of the game for Holy Cross. Again, some of those are their own miscues and very correctable as you move forward. Some of it is just they're, get, they're getting sped up by how Georgetown is pressuring the basketball and also getting in passing lanes. Styles feed inside. Kulabali going to be called for the foul. <laughs> Six point game here in DC. Epps through the contact, and we're going to call it on the floor. Now it's starting to pile up a little bit now on Holy Cross. Georgetown has controlled this game the bulk of the way. Holy Cross's last lead was 6-3 to three at the just under 18-minute mark of the first half. Supreme Cook can't get the turnaround. But Sarah, Georgetown has not been able to open this game no, up too much. Their largest not. lead of the game has been 8. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's been right around this area of where Holy Cross has helped keep it. You keep circling back. Things like turnovers, things like limiting fouls, those are the areas that can be difference makers. Octave, a little too much dribbling maybe, but gets bailed out there. They're going to say that ball went off of Jaden Epps. So Holy Cross will keep it. Still down just six at the under 12-minute mark of the second half. Six-point game, under 12 minutes to go in the second half. And Sarah, talking to Holy Cross head coach Dave Paulson earlier today at shoot-around, he was telling us his young team needs to learn how to win, also learn how not to lose. Against the tough Georgetown team here, this is not a game that they're expected to win as they throw it out of bounds out of the timeout. But plays like that are ones that Coach Paulson wants to see not happen down the stretch like they did against Siena. On cue and just not beating yourself. There's some things that you can control, others, you know, sometimes you have days or nights that shots aren't going in with the same regularity or consistency with, you would expect. You're taking care of the basketball, taking care of the glass, a lot of the 50-50, the, the hustle plays, all of those type of things, and in composure down the stretch. Epps, no good on the three, and Octave the rebound. Holy Cross had two turnovers late in that loss at Siena and also gave up an offensive board. 
that proved to be the game-winning bucket for Siena, and now they're within four of the Hoyas on the octave runner. A quick early offense. They continue to go with Drew Fielder, too. I know he has size, but on the defensive side, they are attacking him. And also, Holy Cross has been really good in the paint. 28-14 to 14 edge here against Georgetown. Drum ball. Up to about the 12-foot mark. Just elevated and a little right-hand push shot. We back to six. Big discrepancy, though. We've been talking about turnovers, the three-point line. It, Ed Cooley told us earlier, he said, for this team, as you see, Brumbau turning the corner there. Nice job creating some space here with the body. But he said he, he wants his team to to have a goal of making 8 to 11 three-point shots a game. I mean, yep. that's kind of the, the ballpark range. And right now, tonight, they're already 8 of 21. 8 of 22, I should say. Uh, really effective, really efficient. Also limiting Holy Cross's looks. Lavalli gets it back from Montgomery and throws it down with two hands. Big play by Holy Cross. Breakdown defensively for Georgetown. Holy Cross isn't going anywhere. They <laughs> keep coming through with timely plays. Staying alive in this one. Epps puts his head down. High off the window, won't fall, but he'll head to the free throw line. Watch this play, turning the corner on Montgomery to stay with him and Koulibaly wide open off the play. Just a, a miscommunication by Georgetown. One guy thought he was switching, the other one didn't, and they got two in the middle. Koulibaly closes that out with an exclamation point. And Sarah, you talk about early in the season, teams trying to come together and learn how to play with each other. A much tougher task for this Georgetown team than Holy Cross, their opponent tonight. Georgetown's got 11 newcomers on this roster. I mentioned the number of transfers. These guys are all trying to figure each other out early in the season. It, it, so you have uh, 11 newcomers, but transfers who are coming from different programs. Right. They've played different systems, different philosophies, different coverages. A new head coach in Ed Cooley who's bringing a new system. So even for the guys who have been here, it's a new start. And that's all a part of, of the work in progress. And, and why probably Ed Cooley told us, you know, part of, of how he feels, it's overwhelming. Because there's a lot to put in, a lot to get to, get to here in the non-conference part of the schedule when you know that you also are preparing yourself for a monster Big East season coming up. Rumball skies for the defensive rebound. Wayne Bristol Jr. Gets into the paint, grabs his own board, gets it swatted by Koulibaly, but they call a foul on the Holy Cross forward. And Wayne Bristol Jr. will go to the line. Nice take. Doesn't get it to go, gets his rebound, picks up the foul off that play. And Bristol Jr., one of three returning Hoyas that are a part of their rotation along with Heath and Ryan Matumbo. He had double-digit rebounds in their season opener against LeMoyne. And a chance to get the lead back to eight, which is Georgetown's high so far tonight. And he does. Caleb Kenny checks back in for Holy Cross with Koulibaly heading to the bench. He and Montgomery now with three fouls. Corner three from Montgomery and another offensive rebound grabbed by Holy Cross. A foul on the floor as Octave continues to make his mark on this game either scoring rebounding mixing it up a little bit he's doing a little bit of everything it's interesting because when we spoke with dave paulson he, he talked about that sienna game and said they kind of got punched in the mouth early but then came back started to be more physical understood the tone they needed to set and it feels very similar here and, and really out of the gates they did they knew the level of physicality that they would have to play with and they brought it Octave, seven boards to go with his 14 points so far. He's going to pull a deep three with the shot clock winding down. That's off the mark, and Drew Fielder rips the rebound away from his own teammate. 
Brumbaugh now with three fouls for Georgetown. So fouls starting to mount a bit on both sides. Cook and Brumbaugh both with three on the Georgetown side. And Montgomery and Koulibaly with three for Holy Cross. Now, a bit of a 2-3 zone here. Ball tipped out of bounds will stay with the Hoyas. Jaden Epps does such a nice, good job of getting in the teeth of the defense, protects the ball, knows how to tuck it. Not sure Montgomery agreed with, with that call, uh, that it was off purple. But. Yeah, that could have gone either way. Come on, Rowe, come on, Rowe! Butter, butter, butter! No. Rumbaugh with four to shoot. Maybe not aware of the shot clock, down to one! At the buzzer! Rowan Brumbaugh! Looked like he lost track of the shot clock for a moment, but he pulled it off. A 7-0 run for Georgetown. Rumbaugh now Dean up Octave. Tipped around inside. Fighting for it was Kenny, but if the Hoy has come away, Jaden Epps in transition. No good. And now Holy Cross gonna push. Easy inside for Octave. And now Georgetown gonna run. Cook spins out. Every time this building is about to pop yeah. with some plays, Holy Cross has responded. That's Elder. Can't draw iron there. He still is scoreless tonight. Average north of 12 points per game last year. Georgetown increasing their lead to nine here in the second half. Rowan Brown. New faces one season but this now has somewhat become a regularity a regularity for programs especially when new coaches in and there's a shift in the program um you know we were talking about the the gavit games coming up that yep. will be aired on fox and uh, st john's playing michigan at the garden you look at rick patino in his first year and a whole slew of uh, yeah. new rosters new players um two two returning from that team and you kind of go down the list of so many different college teams the, the movement changes the dynamic very quickly drew fielder missed the front end of a one and one out of the break he still just got three points tonight Shot clock to five. Kenny into the lane. Offensive rebounds. And there's Octave again making his presence felt. He gets fouled and will go to the line. Holy Cross continues to follow the driver. And for as much as we have mentioned that Georgetown has size, they have size at, at the five spot, but across other positions, you know, Holy Cross is pretty sturdy in their heights and how they're attacking the glass and on the floor, the floor games, and we've seen especially from both Octave and from Caleb Kenny, Montgomery as well, their ability to, to attack the glass. Octave gets both, and it's back to a seven-point game. Holy Cross doing a nice job, Sarah, on the offensive glass, despite the size discrepancy that does not work in their favor. Nine offensive boards for them tonight. Fielder for three. Too strong. And Holy Cross a chance to cut into this Georgetown lead a little more. Three on the way. Off the mark from Octave. Epps trying to make something happen. Tipped out of bounds. We'll stay Hoya basketball. <laughs> Montgomery. All over Epps. Epps. A little extra step there and a Georgetown turnover. For Montgomery, just staying in front. And Georgetown has drivers. Epps is one of those 
the, you can look at the three-point line, 9 of 24 for Georgetown. They're putting up a high volume of three-point shots, but they've also been getting to the basket for Holy Cross to stay in front. It's going to be important here down the stretch. Octave off to the freshman Nugent. Here's Batch Elder. Caleb Kenny to the wing, and it goes off of Batch Elder's hands and out of bounds. Another Holy Cross turnover. 12 to 4 now, the turnover disparity. Holy Cross to Georgetown. Jay Heath misses the three. Yet again, Holy Cross continues to stay in striking distance. Octave going to work on the shorter Eps. Turnaround jumper is good. Octave to 20 and 9 now tonight. Run ball. No good. It's a 6 nothing Joe Octave run for Holy Cross. <laughs> he has been composed, aggressive. Go Montgomery, left-hand dribble. Floater just off the back iron. Offensive rebound by Octave. And he'll go back to the line for Holy Cross. Right place, right time. That comes from instinct. That comes from effort. We're seeing all of that from Joe Octave. You look right here, the drive by M Montgomery. It, it boxes and elbows for the Hoyas. And then Octave just comes through with it. Muscles. With one hand. The rebound. I mean, that's... A lot of that is just desire. I mean, that's yeah, it, at this point of the game, and, and Ed Cooley talked with us earlier. We're, we're getting to about that point. He, this has got a, a moxie about him, no question, and a belief, belief in his coaching staff, belief in his guys. And he said, get, get us a, a close game down the stretch and, yep. and believe we can close things off. They do have the lead here now, but, but that's... That's a small difference between teams, you know, what level you get to throughout the course of the season. The ability to close, making plays and game-winning plays down the stretch, and these teams will be tested right here early on. Dave now a double-double, 21 points and 10 rebounds, and he gets Holy Cross back to within four. Epps off to Heath. Into the paint, swatted away by Caleb Kenny, and here comes Octave. Batchelder tipped out of bounds and Holy Cross will keep it. Man, that Holy Cross bench would have exploded <laughs> if that three ball went down from the sophomore guard. Great look. Holy Cross was in a zone, come up with the rebound. Get, they're going to get some early offense and quick looks if they keep getting stops and boards. And a foul on Wayne Bristol Jr. over pursuing the inbounds pass. So that'll send Bo Montgomery to the line for a one-and-one. One. Hoyas have missed their last six field goal attempts. They're scoreless in the last 430, allowing Holy Cross to get closer. And now Montgomery can get the Crusaders within two. Montgomery, one of only four Patriot League players last year with 300 points, 100 rebounds, and 75 assists. Coach Paulson saying he can do a little bit of everything for this Holy Cross team. And he gets the front end of the one and one here. We've got a one possession game. Offensive rebound. Three on the way. We're tied. Joe Octave squares this game at 57.
Jaden Neff's going to try and answer. He does! Back and forth. And Georgetown back up by three. I see. That ends an 11-0 Holy Cross run. Octave putting that elbow into the body of Bristol. And they're going to call a foul on Wayne Bristol Jr. Sarah, we've got a ball game here deep into the center of the time. This isn't quite 80%, but Diana pulled this up for us. When Ed Cooley teams are within five at the final media timeout, a pretty impressive winning percentage the last few years. You can see why. He and his staff. Well, one, it's, it's the understanding of time, score, execution, decisiveness of what he wants to do. And, and he makes you believe. But he, he, he had us ready to run through a wall. Yeah. I know we got to give shouts out to his son, Isaiah. I know yes, couldn't Isaiah be watching here, but, but watching from, from Rhode Island. Uh, but it, it, it trickles down to your team when you have that type of belief and in what you can do in, in closing out games, a calmness and a confidence. But it will be tested here tonight because Holy Cross is the next one. They're believing as well. A nice backdoor cut from Jade Neps, and he finishes to boost the lead back to three for the Hoyas. What does Holy Cross need to do down the stretch, Sarah? To first of all, take care of the basketball. Octave. Let Epps fly by and then drilled the short jumper. Maybe I should just say give the ball to Joe. Yeah, Octave get out of the way. Let him go to work. He, ha but honestly, he has been. And he has been really decisive about how he is getting these shots off. He's got 14 of Holy Cross's last 15, and that's Brumball who will get fouled and go to the line. Give the foul to Batchelder, his second. So Octave, lighten it up here in the second half. But Georgetown's done a nice job of converting on their free throw opportunities, something that I know both of these coaches were talking a lot about earlier today. It, it is those little things. So one limiting your fouls here down the stretch for teams, but converting on free throws and also just the shot selection that you are getting. Both these teams have run a lot. They've gotten some transition buckets early offense. It, it will probably be much more predicated in half-court sets and facing the half-court defense. So how you can execute the sets you're running and what's being called and, and maybe some different defensive looks. Not super productive to start the 2023 season, but he's bounced back in a big way here tonight. And now Georgetown, a little bit of pressure. See what Dave Paulson drew up in that last timeout. Going to let Octave take it off the ball. Gets the ball back after it's knocked away, and that's as easy as it gets for a guy who's been battling for everything tonight. Joe Octave continues to keep Holy Cross close. Epps, a three. Offensive board by Styles. Every extra possession here for Georgetown. Crucial down the stretch as we get to the two minute mark. That's another try. This one's good. Octave and Epps continue to go back and forth. Caleb Kenny. Left-hand dribble, going to work on Styles. Just a bit too strong. What a board inside by Bo Montgomery. And he gets fouled by Brumball, and he'll go to the line. So Octave off the drive, loses the ball and loses possession, able to still regain it and finish it. And this time, Jaden Epps, I mean, he has been cold-blooded. Some of these three-point shots that he's made have not only been critical shots, but ones that are coming off the dribble. Montgomery gets the front end of the one and one. Holy Cross finding itself in a tight ball game late for the second straight game to begin their season. Montgomery gets both, and it's back to two points. And they had an opportunity at the end of that Sienna game. So what's 
for the players who have the opportunity to to create and play make both for themselves and their team and that's a lot of what you see out of a player like Epps and Brumball. That's why you want the ball in their hands. Brumball has the ball in his hands here as we get to a minute 30 left in regulation. Contrez Styles, the UNC transfer. Off for Brumball. Epps. Into the paint. No good, and a foul on the floor. Doesn't matter, that'll be two free throws coming for Supreme Cook as Octave whistles for the bump. And a, a nice drive here. Styles can't get it to go, but you see Octave, the extension with the left arm, just a little too much at the end of that. To be honest, he probably would have come away with that rebound the way it bounced off anyway, and, and maybe didn't need that much of a body bump and body push, but talked about rebounding somewhat undersized is how they've gotten a lot of them here tonight Supreme Cook misses the front ends 64% free throw shooter last year and that's now four fouls on Joe Octave with a minute 12 to go in the second half Cook misses both and now Holy Cross a chance to tie or take the lead. Supreme Cook just two of six from the free throw line tonight. Octave for three. He got it. First lead since it was 6-3. Holy Cross up by one under a minute to go. Jaden Epps gonna try and answer. And a defensive rebound inside by Kenny. Clock looked like it stopped there for a second, so the officials are gonna blow it dead and go to the monitor. Joe Octave on fire tonight. He has just been in a different zone. And, and, and this has been his disposition, his reaction throughout the entire... One second. Thank you. So they're going to take one second off the clock. And we're seeing a full court press here for Georgetown. Get ready for them to, to blitz, to double. They want to get the ball of Octave's hands. They, they will the lose the trap. Holy Cross trying to get across that timeline. And they do. Just barely. Montgomery off for Octave. So there's a nine second difference between shot clock and game clock as we get to 20 seconds left in regulation. Rumball on Octave. Joe Octave, a three. Back rim and an offensive board. Put up too early there. Ball tipped around, out of bounds, kept in. And a bump. They're going to give it to Georgetown with 3.5 left. You had Caleb Kenny flying towards his own bench. You had the ball getting tipped around by both teams. And after right here, a pass going over the top, something that's more of a, a catch and tip in. But yeah, you, you pretty much have time to, to catch it and release it. Jay Heath will inbound for the Hoyas. To Dontre Styles, it's tipped away by Octave, and that will do it. Fittingly, it's Joe Octave that makes the defensive play. 33 points for the senior guard, and he leads Holy Cross to a shocking win here at Capital One Arena, 68-67 over